our morning announcements. 6 p.m. Sunday, Community Bible Study. Monday and Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Bible Recap and the Reading of the Bible, Through the Bible in a Year. For information, contact the church office at 561-832-2101, Monday through Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Prayers for the Bereaved Families. Check out our website, MyNewBethel.org. There you'll find all of our announcements. Here are a few. Attention all members, very important. Stay connected. Please notify the church office if you have a change of address or your phone number change. Please update the church office. Communion Pickup, Saturday, September 5th from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. New Bethel family and friends, thank you so much for joining us for the 25 mile challenge. Yes, we had an awesome turnout. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are in shape and looking forward to the next challenge. Fresh Church updates. On last evening, yes, we had youth virtual praise service. It was awesome. Live with DJ Rain. Yes, our young people, we had a good time. Thank you so much for all of you all that joined us on last evening. Now, we want to stay connected with DJ Rain, so check him out on his live show on Tuesday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Reverb live show on Facebook and also Instagram. We thank you so much, DJ Rain, for sharing with us. Fresh Church members, we'll be back. September 19th, we're going to give our young people a break to allow them to get acclimated into back into school. So we'll see you back September 19th. Thank you for your continuous giving. MyNewBethel.org, online giving. You may give via Giveify or PayPal, or you may drop off at 911 9th Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33401. These are our announcements. for a wonderful day. We've gathered together on another Sunday morning just to give them glory. Oh, why don't you just wave your hands or type in the comments, God, we glorify you and we magnify you for all the great things that you've done, every door that you've opened, even the ones that you've closed. God, we glorify you. Come on. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, I'm the glory. And we're asking, revive us again. Hallelujah, you get all the glory. Hallelujah. Now, God, in this service right now, our prayer, oh God, is that you would just meet us right here. We pray now, God, that the space that we're in right now, that you would occupy it. We move ourselves out of the way, God. 
We invite you into our homes right now. Wherever we are, driving in our cars, oh God, even in our bathrooms, come into where we are. And do what only a God can do. Let something in this service today, oh God, be directly for us. Touch our hearts right now and remind us, oh God, that you'll get the glory and you get the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Revive us again. Father, revive us again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. morning, New Bethel members and friends. I'm just so happy to be here. I was thinking about the scripture where it says, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to thank Reverend Dozier for that awesome hymn, Revive Us Again. And at this time, I want to give honor to our pastor, Reverend Moderator Toby Philpott, in his absence, who is at home resting from surgery. And we thank God for him, for our first lady, Sandra Philpott. Yes. And to all of you in your respective places, I say to you, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are now tuned in to our fifth Sunday musical. I say welcome to each of you as we have got a little bit different format for you but praying that you will be inspired and uplifted through this. At this time, as we look at life and we think about the difficulties of life and the difficulties that we are faced with every day, we know that life is not easy. We, we face good days, and we face bad days. Yes. We have to take the bitter mm -hmm. with the sweet. Yes. So my brothers and sisters, it's important that we know how we must handle difficulties. I heard a preacher say, if you can't take it, mm. you can't make it. Yes. We're in a difficult time now, being in this pandemic, we see COVID numbers rising, y'all. We also see social and racial divide. We see political divide in our government. So our topic today in scripture and song is how to move from a state of panic to a state of triumph. Yes. I'll say that again, how to move yes. from a state of panic yes. to a state of triumph. All right. There are many scriptures that address this issue, but we have chosen this scripture today. So get your Bibles out and follow along with us. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Second Chronicles, the 20th chapter. Beginning with the first verse, it says, after this, the Moabites and the Ammonites were some with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Eden, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Azazon Tamar, that is, Ungedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Well, well 
The Bible tells us that it was Jehoshaphat, and I don't know, many of us, those of us who are part of the New Bethel family should know who Jehoshaphat is. Jehoshaphat was the, the fourth king of Judah. He was the son of Asa. And he did his best to serve God and to follow after his ancestors. But the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat was alarmed. And there's a translation that says he was shaken. He was shaken. So you know what happens. Have you ever had a situation where you wake up and you receive bad news? And it shifts your day. It can, even ins- it can even shift your entire life. Yes. Think about my situation. All of a sudden, I realized that I lost my mom. Mm. Then following the next year, within a 12-month period, I lost my mother-in-law. Yes. And then in that same year, I lost my wife. Now, those are some things that can shake you, that can shift you. And that's what what, what I'm saying. There are some things that can happen in our lives that can change our entire life. We may not be in a physical warfare, y'all, but we are in a spiritual warfare, I tell you. We are in a spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6.12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Mm. Second Corinthians 10, 4 says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So what did Jehoshaphat do? Jehoshaphat, when he came, when he received the news, he sought the Lord. In other words, he prayed, y'all. He prayed. He prayed. He prayed that God will deliver that he would deliver. And that's what we must do. When we come against situations in our life, we must remember to first pray and ask God to deliver us. That's what's so important. And not only should we pray that he deliver us, but not just from circumstances and situations, but we got to narrow that thing down too because sometimes we're our own enemy. We're our own enemy. And what we need to do is ask God, Lord, even deliver me from myself. Unforgiveness, whatever it is that keeps us from moving forward, Lord, deliver me.
It's all right to praise him. Lord, deliver me. He'll deliver you, I promise you. Seek the kingdom of God first. And all his righteousness will be added unto you. This is. And in that 13th verse of 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, it says, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So we see the whole assembly of Judah pray. And not only did they pray, they fast. When I think of COVID, COVID first came, it was used by the devil to steal, kill, and destroy. But now it is employed by God. Mm -hmm. Using my sanctified imagination, God had a meeting with the virus and said, you only have a season. All right. Because scripture says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I'll do what? I heal the land. So it only has a season. But what we got to do is come together as a people. He says, if my people, not the world, he didn't even mention Africa. He didn't say Japan. He didn't say China. He didn't even say the U.S. of A. But he said, if my people who are called by my name, if we will humble ourselves and pray and turn from our wicked way, then the Bible tells us when he prayed, when Jehoshaphat and all of Judah prayed, then the spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, and the son of Jael, and the son of Mataniah, a Levite and a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. So the next thing I would say to you is pray. Then after you pray, you got to not be afraid. So do not fear. Don't fear. And why don't I fear? Because he tells us, thanks be to God, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord.
battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. We said, we got to pray. And we said, when you pray, don't fear. Why? Because fear paralyzes you. We got to be careful that we don't pay more attention to the crisis than the Christ. What you give more attention to will control your life. The battle is not yours. So what else is Jehoshaphat saying in these scriptures? In verse 17, he says, now you will not have to fight this battle. The Lord tells Jehoshaphat, you won't have to fight this battle, but what you must do, mm -hmm. this is third thing, take your position. All right. All right, Jesus. Take your position and stand. So don't di get distracted. We often miss God's blessing because we are not in position to receive it. Yeah. Well, think about the man that had the infirmity and every time he went to go to the pool when the angel would trouble the water he would miss out because he wasn't in position you got to be in position and what i mean by that you got to be in position in your mind you can't be anger and sin and be ready to receive the blessings of god you can't be in the middle of backbiting and be in position to receive the blessings of god you got to take your position. And then when you take your position, stand. Stand. Fight on. Keep the sword in your hand. And you fight on. This is for you, Reverend Phil Park.
turning things around you. How can I remain faithful? Well, let me help you out with two scriptures. Romans 8.31 says, so what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And then Isaiah 53.17 says, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So I tell you, keep the faith. Uh, come on, let's give God praise. Give God praise. Come on. Hallelujah. This is for you all. Question is when you're standing at a crossroad, when you're standing at the crossroad, what do you do? What do you do? When a fork is in the road, when the fork is in the road, what do you do? What do you do? When the world is on your shoulders. When the world your back is up against the wall. When your back is up against the wall. Come on, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? You hold on.
the faith. Consulting the people, yes, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord yes. and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. Well. They went out at the head of the army saying, give them, give thanks to the Lord. Yes. Now what just happened there? What happened there was or the thought I should say I want you to put in your mind is after you take your position, your position and stand and you keep the faith, put a song in your heart. Yes. Put a song in your heart. Amen. There's nothing like being able to sing a song as you're going through and you don't have a lot of words to say, but you can just sing a song. Sing a song. Yes. Yes. And singing the song will cut through mm. the yes. enemy chase. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what they are, what they did, the army of Jehoshaphat. They sing a song. He appointed singers yes. to sing. And some translations says he appointed a choir. Yeah. Yeah. All right now, Jesus. And they wore sanctified garments. <laughs> See how important our position, uh, yeah. our position is. Yeah. He appointed a choir. Okay. And what they did, they went in front of the army. Yes. Wow. yes. They went in front of the army. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Get a praise in your heart. Get a praise in your heart. And then, I like this song that we're going to sing now because what happens is when you're praising, 
They say praise go up. Uh -huh. Blessings come down. Yes. Okay. But don't praise him because you need something. Uh -huh. <laughs> but praise him because you need him. Yes. 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 You all know how it feels when somebody don't really want you. They just want what you can give them. Yeah. Yes. That's not what God is asking for. He wants right. you to need him. Yes. Not for what he can give you. Yes. Amen. Put a song in your heart. You are holy. You are holy. Yes. You are holy. Just like the army of Jehoshaphat. The enemy is out there, but we're gonna walk through it and yeah. sing and praise and sing and praise and sing and praise. <laughs>
in your home, I need you to wave your hand and just sing it. y'all what happened ah uh, when they began to sing and praise god god confused the enemy all right yes, yes he did the ammonites and the moabites <laughs> went against the mount seah yeah. the people of mount seah and destroyed them <laughs> and then confused the ammonites and confused the moabites and they fought and killed each other yeah. now who can do that but god but God, that's a great God. Yes. And what I love about, what I love about it, what happened at the very end, what happened was <laughs> they went into the temple. All of the men of Judah returned joyfully to Jerusalem. Because the Lord had given them calls to rejoice over their enemies. And guess what? They entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord. They went with their harps. They went with the lyres uh -huh. and the trumpets. Uh -huh. They had the instruments, y'all. Hmm. 
And they praise God. Yes. So the last thing I say to you, not only keep a song in your heart, but when he's giving you the victory, well. give him the praise. Yes. Give him the thanks. Be thankful to him. Give him the thanks. You know why? And we got an appropriate song for We have an appropriate song for that because he's a great God. He's a, can I get a witness? He's a great God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's do that.
glory, 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 glory. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. I hope something that has been said, a song that you've heard today in your hearing has been an encouragement to you. We're not here for form or fashion. We are just soldiers appointed by God to minister in song. Musicians' hands that are anointed. Saul asked for the musician to play to soothe his soul. Something about music, amen. So at this time, what we would like to do is extend the invitation to discipleship. And this invitation to discipleship is for all of you who don't know Christ and you have not given your life to Christ. The very person we talked about that can give you the victory Move from a state of panic to a state of triumph. Only God can do that. Only God can turn an entire situation around. Only God can do that. And who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? If you have given your life to Christ and you backslidden, this appeal is to you as well. Although it seems that you're walking in the dark because you can't see the expected end. But there's a light in the darkness and that light is Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world. If you have made a decision to follow the light, you can call the numbers shown on your screen. 561-832-2101. Dial that number. We want to hear from you. We care about you. Call and let them know. Monday, someone is at that number. Monday through Thursdays from 9 to 3 p.m. And let them know. Say, I was listening to the broadcast and I want to give my life to Christ. Or if, even if you want a prayer, to put in a prayer request. If you don't want to dial that number, you can email us and let us know. We want to hear from you. And that email is at mynewbethel.org. That email will be obtained by our pastor and our first lady. Or you can go to our website where it says contact us. You can put it in there and we will be able to reach out to you. But we want to hear from you. We want to know how you're doing and what challenges you have encountered. And if you've given your life to Christ, we want to know that. And it's not about membership. It's not about membership. We're not asking you and and, and, and forcing you to become a member of New Bethel. We we care about souls. As long as you accepted Christ in your life. Now, if you want to become a member of New Bethel, there's open and you can still do that by those ways that I've just mentioned. But walk in the light. It's a beautiful light, I tell you. Come, come, come where the dewdrops of mercy are bright. We will walk.
Surely the presence of the Lord has been with us in this place. And we pray that God has met you where you are now, at your home. As we leave from this place, but never away from his presence, we give him glory, honor, and praise. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're our strength and our redeemer. And all those that love the Lord, say amen.